Hey guys, it's Dr. Baird here. Today we're talking about how to do the kettlebell lift. So this is one of the Im most important movement patterns that we're gonna teach. And as you start to master that movement pattern, what you're gonna be able to do is really start to add weight. And then as you add weight, it's gonna be one of the most important exercises to build strength in your glute and hamstrings, increase motor recruitment, increase that full body tension, to really protect your joints, stop any pain, get you back to these favorite activities that you love. This is why we teach this exercise to almost everybody that comes in here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and cover the things we need to do to get that movement pattern down. First one has to do with feet placement. So again, we teach this movement to a lot of people. One of the more common things we see is people line up kind of too far back from the kettlebell. So what happens when they come down, they really have to reach forward to get that weight. And that again, the heavier you go, is gonna start to put a lot of pressure on your low back right there. So what we want is our feet to be lined up on the outside of the bell. So when I come down again, my hands, my arms, should really just be able to go straight down and not have to reach forward here. Now the next thing when we're doing the kettlebell lift, what we teach our clients to do is really how to develop tension in the hamstring and glutes so that we avoid using our low back. That's one of the most common things people do when they injure themselves doing a kettlebell lift, doing a barbell deadlift, is they don't create that tension in the hamstrings. It goes through the back and that's when you hurt your disc. So one of the ways to do that is to keep your chest forward. So what we see a lot of times when we have people kind of down in that lift position and we tell them to de develop uh, tension in the hamstrings by lifting the hips up is that they'll let their chest fall down. So they'll do, they'll do something like this. And so again, I do have a lot of tension in the hamstrings, but my chest is all the way forward. And again, as I start to lift, it's going to be more of a hinge at my low back to come up. So when we're doing this, we want to focus on keeping our chest pointed forward. So from here, we're down, my chest is pointed forward. Now I create that tension in the hamstrings by lifting the hips up. Again, I feel that all. Then again, I just press through the feet to lift that weight straight up. So again, it's the difference of keeping that chest up, creating tension versus letting the chest fall forward, creating tension. This is not what we want. And the last thing is how to set the weight down safely. So you've done a good kettlebell lift, you're holding it at the top, how do you get it back down? So what we're gonna do, I'm holding the weight at the top, you're gonna do that weighted hip hinge that we practiced. So again, it's loose knees, sending those hips back just until I feel tension in the hamstrings, then it's okay to bend the knees. Then all we're gonna do as we're learning this movement pattern is to reset and start that process all over again. As you get better at the movement, you'll be able to string them together. But for now, we're really just gonna get to the bottom, set the weight down, get that chest up, get everything reset, and then lift again. So I'll do a couple so you can see what it looks like. So again, feet on the outside of the bell, loose knees, send the hips back, keeping that chest up, creating tension, pressing through the feet to stand up, weighted hip hinge down, and again, I'm just gonna reset. So I get that tension, keeping my chest straight up, press through my feet, weighted hip hinge, bend the knees, back down. There you have it. That is how you perform the kettlebell lift. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks.